How dreamy was that, everybody? My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Today, we are going to finish up the CB3 number 2 HD, and we're going to do some Q&A, and uh, we're going to hang out. Not sure how long. I do want to go out and fly. So that basically means three hours from now. I mean, at three hours would probably be the absolute maximum. But hey, put in as much time as I can. Get ready to go fly. Hopefully we can fly this thing. In the chat, looks like we've got Adam Moore, Billy DFPV, Brent Vogelsang, JWFPV, KD2RDH, Larry, Ken Hill, King Sloth. Ha, <laughs> King Sloth. Well, we got a contender already for best name of the night. <laughs> Uh, LCV FPV, Marco Danilovic, Monkey Shine FPV, Mr. Sprinkles, Mr. Huggy, Nick, Huggy, Mr. Huggy, not Huggy, uh, Nathaniel LaBeouf, Nick Hayes, Noah Like the Ark, Patrick Ruan, Pedro Tomei, Rob Axelson, Roscoe Sticks, RS7DRVR, Sean Hussein, SST FPV, Steve Coptra, Tiago Ramos, Turtle B FPV, Tweet FPV, William Barlow, and Zero FP. B, thanks for joining me, everybody. If I missed your name, blame YouTube. Their participant list is... It just defies all logic. So, uh, yeah, there we go. That And, the, yeah, the, we've we've got a winner, for sure, for the, uh, for, the, for the best name of the night. King Sloth, congratulations. You win. Nothing. Bragging rights, I guess. There you go. Uh, South Jersey, KDR... KD... Wah, KD2RDH Larry... I know you're in South Jersey, man. Whereabouts? I uh, have we talked about this before? I grew up in uh, Trenton, New Jersey, and then after university, moved down to Cherry Hill, Maple Shade area. Um, I feel like maybe we did talk about that before. Everybody, post where you're at. Maybe we can make some friends. Uh, oh, <laughs> Rap Axelson says I think he's doing his hair. <laughs> harsh, harsh, but deserved. Um, Tweet talking to Monkey Shine, asking if he got him yet. Monkey Shine, how do you like those grips? Roscoe Sticks, how are you? And... Hey, look at that. Caught up on the chat. All right, Norway. King Sloth is in Norway. woo That's why he's the King Sloth, because he's in Norway. God damn. Uh, Norfolk Ing... Ing... Uh, Norfolk Ing... Ing, Ing Norfolk, England. There we go. Hey, I can speak. Words are hard. Germany, Washington State, Kentucky, uh, Manitoba. It's a fun word to say. Columbus, uh, Texas, Louisiana, Little Rock, Arkansas, L.A., Florence, South Carolina. No way. Experimental. I used to be in uh, Charleston. Moved here to Atlanta about a year ago from Charleston. Spent about five years in Charleston. Uh, I wonder how many times I can say Charleston. Uh, Morristown. Oh, yeah, right. We did, Larry. We did talk about that. Okay, cool. Uh, Chicago-ish. <laughs> Savannah, Georgia. Uh, San Francisco. I'm very jealous. Derek Nelson. Uh, British Columbia. Royal Hertfordshire here. New York. Pittsburgh, PA. Adam, how's everything going in New York, man? Hopefully it's uh, it's calming down. Yeah. <laughs> Lanuzo says we all need haircuts. Isn't that the goddamn truth? Oh, hey, yeah, speaking of... All right, there we go. We're going with yellow. We're going with the yellow kicker. All right, uh, Gold County, California, Mobile, Alabama, Denver, Colorado, Ottawa, Ontario, Tri-Cities, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Line for Bandalorian, Lincoln, England, North Carolina for Ted Blake. Yeah, JoJo, you know it. It's going to start lavaing soon. Kansas City, Missouri. We got... Dude, what... Uh, there's a lot of folks from more folks than I think from Alabama and Missouri. That's uh, that's crazy. <clears throat> it's Blunty is up there in Denver, Colorado, just just swimming in legal weed. Detroit, Michigan for Steve Coptura. Sao Paulo, Brazil for Tiago. All right, Vancouver, Canada for uh, Lanuzo. Let's get it going here. Expense experimental RC. I believe I met you in Anderson, South Carolina, South Carolina at. Uh, 2019 is dead race. I'm assuming you meant to say tiny whoop race? Alright, let's get going. Uh, I can see your comment, Raw Picks. Munich! Woo! Munich! Oh, thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. Speaking of water. Look at that. 
Look at that, yo. My parents are the best. Switzerland for president, RR says. All right, everybody, uh, hit me with those questions. If you want me to see your question, you got to type at C-I-O-T-T-I-F-P-V before it. That's going to light your comment up in orange so that I can see it. Uh, I'm going to be over here in my little build area, and it makes it hard to see the uh, the chat. Uh, so make sure if you want me to read your comment that you type at C-I-O-T-T-I-F-P-V. Um, no spaces, no nonsense, at C-I-O-T-T-I-F-P-V space your comment. Uh, the regulars, if they see you forgetting to tag me, they will copy and paste your comment, give you credit, and tag me, um, and they might even, um, just, you know, like, say to you, hey, tag him, so that he can see it. So, uh, yeah, thanks, moderators, thanks, normals, regulars, uh, I do not, Christopher Yotes, do you already have a review of the Insta360 Go? I don't even have one yet, um, Christopher. Uh, I got laid off uh, two weeks ago, so I'm being very adult about money right now, and uh, just kind of spending money on bare essentials, and unfortunately the 360 is not a bare essential, um, and it's a little expensive, 200 bucks is a lot, um, I can't wait to, um, I'm looking forward to, to getting one, especially since you can get them from Best Buy with the, uh, the warranty. Um, <laughs> tweet uh, rightfully says that I do now have the uh, Insta360 Go mounts, um, so I do need to get. Uh, thanks to Tweet FPV, by the way, um, I do need to get the the matching camera for the mounts for sure. So it's uh, it's high on the list of of things to get, but I'm just giving it a little bit of time here. Um, just to the, the I I just did my. Um, where is it? Here it is. I just did my uh, unemployment stuff, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how much unemployment's gonna pay out, and yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I saw that Lenuzo. Um, I, I it's weird. I I tend to not enter giveaways now because I don't know. Like with with you guys supporting me, it it, it I don't know. It feels weird. Like I want you guys to win stuff. Um, and I feel like, like if I, if I win something that I should then give it away, I don't know, it's strange, but, um, whatever. <laughs> uh, raw picks FPV, how would you compare a TP 300 grams to a typical micro alien three inch quad? Uh, isn't a TP three lighter, faster, more efficient, maybe more durable due to lightweight? Great question. Raw picks FPV. Great, great, great question. Um, lighter. Yes. Faster, eh, more efficient, uh, yes, for sure, because it's lighter. Uh, more durable, definitely not. So uh, when I started in this hobby back in 2017, my very first FPV rig was the original all-plastic, all-white uh, Emacs Baby Hawk, which was, I mean, it's a toothpick design. It's got the camera in the center, the flight controller in the center, um, uh, you know, X-arms, and... Um, and when they sold it, it was a 2.3 inch prop. I ended up upgrading it uh, into a carbon fiber frame that was a little bit bigger so that it could clear three inch props. And um, I put it into a carbon frame, uh, got a more durable camera mount in there, and uh, yeah, kind of had a toothpick back in 2017. Uh, moved from 2S to 3S with it. It was on, uh, it came with 1104 motors. They were 5250 kV, I believe. And yeah, it was great for a little while, but I got sick of uh, banging the motors up because they were exposed out on the arms. Uh, and it was running bi blade props. Tri blade props keep the motors from smashing into the concrete. Uh, and also, I wanted something with more power and more throw. Uh, so that's when I kind of started gravitating towards this style of build, um, where, which basically doubled the weight. Um, the, the weight went from about a hundred ish grams all up to 200 ish grams all up. Uh, the battery cell count went from two to three to four S on this. This runs four S four fifties. And, uh, 
I personally uh, have had much better luck with this crashing. So the, the camera is enclosed in the carbon, so you don't break as many cameras. And um, the extra weight and the extra power gave it more off-throttle throw. And that's just sort of the, the flight style that I preferred. Um, that being said, I have now revisited the toothpick. Uh, Nick Burns was cool enough to send me a... Uh, after he was done with it, reviewing it, this, the GEP RC Skip 3 HD. Um, and I spent a couple months flying and building and upgrading that. And I, I, yes, we, it's, it's gotten better. The electronics are lighter. Um, but it's still got sort of the same... Pro I, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't blown away by it. Um, it flew fine. It flew great. Uh, the HD looked fantastic. Uh, there were props in view. That's the other thing that kind of kills me about toothpicks. Um, I prefer there to not be any props in view. Uh, and, yeah, I started banging up motors because, again, when I would crash on concrete, it would just be the motor bell directly to the ground. Uh, so I kind of find my... I, it, it's the same, the, the same reasons that I moved away from it three years ago are the same reasons that I actually pulled it apart. Um, and am putting the, the HD camera and board from it into the Tiny Trainer, which um, I think I'm going to do a, a build and review live stream either, I think, Tuesday. Uh, but, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at on the toothpicks. They, they just don't fit my um, needs. Uh, the, two, the biggest things being props in view and just durability. Uh love how quiet they are absolutely love flying the little um tiny hawk race two inch uh but i can't make footage from it it's it's just flying for the fun of flying which is great and and i love that um but yeah i that thing swings uh three blade or four blade two inch props and those are much more durable so that kind of fits the what i'm looking for a little bit better uh, Raw Picks asks what the all-up weight was of that two, of, of the Skip, Gep, Skip, Gep, RC, Skip 3, <laughs> HD, <laughs> and, uh, it was 102, 104 or so, so it was a little bit heavier than the, the actual, um, you know, official Bob Ruge spec toothpick builds, which he says should be in the 70 to 80 gram range, uh, but it was carrying HD, so kind of, uh, yeah, that adds weight. I do have the parts and pieces to build a legit kebab spec toothpick, uh, which I do plan on doing, and I'm sure it'll fly great, uh, and, and I'll be very interested to compare that to the, um, to the two inch, uh, Tiny Hawk Race 2 for me, Max. Uh, so that's coming soon, maybe next weekend-ish, hopefully. Depends on how the building goes this week. So, there you go. Uh, what else do we have? I see some orange. I see some orange. I see some orange. Here we go. Great question, though, Raw Picks. Thanks for that question, man. Awesome. Uh, Lenuzo said... Oh, yeah, okay. We talked about that. Uh, tweet rightfully <laughs> says that being an adult sucks. Yeah, it sometimes does. Uh, do -do 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 -do. Patrick Ruan says that he got kebabs, 1303 motors in, uh, still figuring out a tune. Uh, but they're so badass. Have you tried them yet? I have not, Patrick. I was going to get a set uh, last time he had them in stock, but I've got a couple of these uh, sets of RC and Power 1204s, which are kind of sort of close enough. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Dorija says, also being a kid sucks. You can't buy anything. Yeah, there's, uh, there's... I don't think you'll find an adult in the world, though, that wouldn't give their left arm to, to be a kid again just because of the... Just the lack of, of kind of responsibilities and just like your main responsibility being to just stay alive <laughs> is pretty cool. Um, getting older and, and having to balance a job with bills with real things is, uh, it gets old, man. <laughs> it gets old. I just want to wake up and stare at the wall all day sometimes. I guess I kind of can, but uh, Roll on B says, what's your opinion for a budget next level gear upgrading from Tiny Hawk Beginner Bundle? Uh, that's a great question, Roll-On. It's sort of going to be, I think it's going to be all about, do you want to start building? Like, 
do you, are are you looking to buy another um, bind and fly, or are they, um, or are you down to to really dig in and just kind of dive in head first into the hobby? Uh, I think you're going to be better off diving in because as you get better and fly harder, you're going to crash harder and you're going to need to know how to fix the goddamn things anyway. So you're, you might as well sort of build from scratch. And at that point, it's kind of going to be about what, what do you want? Like, where do you want to fly? Do you want to fly big ass fields where we're going to guide you towards like a five inch rig? Um, or do you want to keep flying small spots that, that you've already been flying the, uh, the tiny Hawk in, uh, in which case a build like, uh, like this one that we're going to dig into in a minute here um, would be a really good fit for you. So yeah, um, that's that's kind of what I would recommend. If, if you if you think you're you're gonna stick with this hobby, I would just say like dive in man and, and just start doing a, a, a build and you got plenty of help, you got plenty of resources. Uh, myself, Joshua, we try to answer as many questions as possible and the rest of the community is amazing too. So yeah, man, dive in, in my opinion, but uh, let me know if, if you don't want to dive in, tag me again. Um, if you're like hell bent on a, on a bind, well, if you're hell bent on a bind and fly, listen to the chat. Cause <laughs> they know bind and flies better than I do. Uh, but if you want to go the build it yourself route, um, yeah. If you have any questions, man, let me know. See Audi FPV on Instagram, Facebook here on YouTube and on Patreon. Uh, link to the Patreon is down here somewhere. Uh, over there, we've got unreleased flight edits, um, uh, filter tuning advice, PID tuning advice, uh, articles about uh, comparing different prop sizes, different prop brands, all kinds of really good stuff over there. You can get in for like 10 cents a day. It's three bucks a month is the general admission. And then on Monday night, so tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern, uh, I do a giveaway stream where I run... Um, the, the $5 tier, the $10 tier, and the $20 tier get weekly giveaways. Uh, and so I run them every single Monday night. So if you want to get in on some giveaways, you can bump up from three bucks to five bucks or 10 bucks or 20 bucks or 30 bucks to get entered into all three of them. Um, so that means 12 giveaways a month and those guys be cleaning house. They win all kinds of fun stuff and yeah, it's a good time. So there you go. Did my things. Uh, FPV Therapy also is a group over on Facebook. FPV Space Therapy is how you find it. And a um, bunch of us folks with mental illness hanging out, telling our stories, um, talking about talk therapy and, and the different ways that we're dealing with it every single day. Uh, so come on over if you or anybody you know has it. Uh, one in five or so people have mental illness of some form. So somebody in your life has it. It might be you. Um, even if it's not you, if you learn a little bit more about it, you'll be a much more compassionate person and you'll understand when they just can't come hang out with you. And you're like, what the fuck? This is the fourth time this week that I've been trying to hang out with this person. They, it's not that they hate you. It's that their brain hates them and is being a real dick. So there you guys go. Uh, there's my pitch for you to join FPV space therapy on Facebook. Uh, Athix FPV says you need to fly the baby tooth. Which, uh, baby tooth? Which one's that? Baby tooth. Oh, 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 the 1S. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do want to fly one of those. Um, and I do actually have 1202 and a half. So I, I just might build, uh, what I'll probably do is build the TP3 and then take that squid and swap the motors and drop it into a, a, a baby tooth 1S. Uh, raw picks FPV says, well, okay, we got that. Uh, weight of the toothpick. YouTube did the thing where it scrolled all the way to the bottom. You goddamn son of a bitch, you. Uh, <laughs> Raw Picks FPV says, Guess TP3, not baby tooth. Kebab seems to really enjoy the baby tooth. Thanks for answering. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Thanks for tagging me. That's all, all you gotta do. All you gotta do is tag at Seattle FPV and I'll answer you guys. Uh, Doc Murdoch says, Good afternoon. What's up, Doc? How are you, man? Uh, Roll on B says, Medium novice still and learning, so next stepping. Uh... Yeah, my recommendation stands roll on. I mean, to be honest, you kind of can't, kind of can't go wrong. Uh, Emacs products are great. They're not the best. Um, they are the best for the price sometimes, though. Um, it, it's tough to say that though because you've got like lunatics like Happy Model um, putting out the Mobula Six for 
fucking eighty dollars, like that that and and just sort of relying on China's trade laws to, to, there are like government kickbacks in China, so they can basically, Happy Model can basically sell the Mobulus Six literally at cost, like actually at their cost, and then they'll get some like twenty six percent kickback, I think it is, uh, from the government, which is where they can make some actual profit. Um, so it's it's hard to say that, but. Other than other than those like insane deals, uh, the Emacs products are typically better than what you're paying. Like if if it's 120 bucks, you're typically getting like 150, 160 bucks worth of product. Um, so yeah, I've I've had a long relationship with Emacs, just um, using their products, and lately um, I've had a little bit more amazing <laughs> relationship with them. Uh, they've now sent me two. Of their, um, I gotta be careful what I say. Uh, of their, I'll just say quads. Uh, they sent me one that I've been testing, and now I have an unreleased one that uh, comes out. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that. So it comes out at some point here soon, and uh, I was literally just flying it before the stream, and it flies great, and it's awesome. So. I'll get some uh, I'll get some DVR of it for you guys because I'm pretty sure I can show you the flight footage because I mean it's flight footage you can't tell what it is or isn't uh, yeah it'll be good uh, Roland says more of a general thought and comment question you're welcome brother uh, just keep whatever you have to do just keep flying. Um, just stay on the sticks, but buy as many batteries as you can for your current rig so that when you go out, you can fly a whole bunch of batteries at once uh, and get into a simulator. Spend as much time as you can in a simulator. It'll save you so much money, and it will progress your, your levels, of, your skill as a pilot um, faster than anything. Uh, I prefer Velocidrone because my computer is old, uh, but Liftoff is also really good. And there's a couple new ones that people have said are good as well. But I just basically know Liftoff and Velocidrone, and they're both great. All right. Let's scroll down. Oh, thanks, YouTube. You did it again. King Sloth got the exact same motors for a 4S 2-inch custom build. Any tuning tips? They seem extremely undersized. Um, which, uh, King Sloth, which motors are you talking about? And... Uh, I think the problem is less the motors and more the battery. Uh, a two-inch propeller rig uh, is probably going to always have a hard time picking up a 4S battery. The, the lightest 4S batteries are 4S 450s, uh, which are 60-plus grams, and that's just kind of too much of a payload um, for a, a two-inch propeller. There's only so much thrust you can make on a two-inch propeller before, before it really runs into efficiency problems um, and I th and I think that you have reached that limit. Uh, the max I ever have put uh, two inch props on is 3S, 3S 7500 kV and that really feels like the limit. It, it really feels like if I go up any higher on the kV, um, basically the faster and the faster and the faster you turn a prop, the less efficient it gets. Um, so there is like a, a limit. It's not an actual limit but it kind of is at the same time. So I would try to drop down to a 3S 450 or a 3S 300, um, a much lighter weight battery. And um, unfortunately, that might not work if, if you're like 400 or 500, I'm sorry, 4,000 or 5,000 kV. A 3S might not have enough um, voltage to, to produce enough RPM. So now you're talking about, unfortunately, switching motors as well. But maybe you can take those motors that are on there and, and build a 2.5-inch or a 3-inch rig with them. Uh, that's going to be my uh, my guesstimation there. TweetFPV says, have a good stream. Get your ass out and fly. Deal, Dan. I will do that just for you. Rotten Tomato, have you flown bleep, bleh, Have you flown the BQE Rip Squeaker? Uh, 2 to 3-inch, depending on arm size you choose. 3 millimeter plates look strong, but don't know... Uh, anyone who has used BQE products, uh, I don't, is, um, I, I assume that Bot is sponsored by BQE, he should be, uh, I've not, I, I've heard BQE products are great though, uh, the, the guy who, 
runs BQE is old friends with the original owner of Rotorius. Uh, some of their designs are kind of similar too, which is super cool. And uh, yeah, so BQE makes great stuff. They do make stuff that is a little bit heavier, uh, meant for bashing. So if, if that's the way that you fly, awesome. Uh, if you don't crash a lot, you can probably find something that's a little bit lighter that'll give you a little bit better flight performance. And I'm looking up the, uh, the rip squeak. I've heard of it before. I just can't picture. Um, I don't know if it. They have one that's just like. And this is it. So, this is the one that's just like the Rotorius Zoot. Um, this is actually the product that I was sort of referencing when I said there's some rigs that um, BQE and Rotorius have that are very, very similar. And this is the one. Um, so, I've flown the Rotorius version of this, which is the Zoot, which is a little bit lighter. Um, and it's great. It flies really good. Uh, it is a little bit. that it, It's not quite as durable as I'd hoped. So I'll bet you this Rip Squeak Micro is, has that little bit of extra durability that I was maybe looking for. Um, so yeah, this, this Rip, Rip Squeak should be awesome. This is a really cool frame design. Um, it, it is a little bit of an H frame, which I don't love, um, but at least the, the carbon fiber grain is running correctly down the length of the arms. Um, so yeah, this isn't my favorite um, design in, in terms of frame, but this is the best implementation of a micro frame th that I've seen at least of a micro frame that um, decouples the um, the stack uh, bolts and the stack mounts from the arms. Uh, the uh, the CB3s don't do that, but luckily the CB3 frame is stiff enough where it doesn't seem to matter. Um, the theory being that if you've got the arms with the motors on them directly connected to a bolt that goes up through your stack, you're introducing unwanted vibrations to that stack. So what they've done with the with the rip squeak here is, wow, this is huge. Let me bring this down a little bit. Um, what they've done here with the rip squeak, if I can zoom, there we go, is uh, here are the stack mounting bolts here and the arms bolt uh, in the middle to, to one another. So the stack bolts are on the same plate, but they're not the same screws uh, that jack into the arms. So in theory, this will give you a little bit less vibrations up through those bolts into the stack and into the gyro. Uh, in theory and in practice are two completely different things, of course. Uh, I've, I would actually love to do some some back-to-back -back black. I would love to build... Maybe I'll do that. Because um, I have... A, I still have a Zoot here. Oh, there you go. There you can see. Um, that's how the, uh, the rip squeak is. It's just got one bolt holding the arms to uh, the front arms and the rear arms. And, uh, and then the center bolt's there for the stack. Um, that'll be interesting. If, if, if I end up with a... Um, a CB3 with a flight controller that's got black box. Uh, I will build a Zoot with a flight controller with black box. Uh, but see, there's too many other... Yeah, it's not going to work. There, there's too many other um, variables in place, right? Like, the, the frame is a completely different geometry. Uh, we would have to basically take one of these frames and make a duplicate, a duplicate of it just stretched out. Um, yeah, not really going to... It's kind of impossible to properly head-to-head -head test that, but hey, uh, e either design has its uh, has its pluses and minuses, and uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. Next question. <laughs> I'm bailing. I'm pulling the fucking ripcord on this conversation. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about now. Steve Copter says, Are, is there any fully American quads you can buy or build all parts made in America? Nah, Steve. Uh, all the motors are made overseas. Uh, probably all of the... the uh, PCB related stuff to flight controller ESCs. Um, if if there was a fully U.S. made rig, it would probably be like tw it'd probably be damn near twice the cost. Um, so yeah, William Butler, I did I did almost let the cat out of the bag. I almost told you guys exactly what it was a minute ago. Uh, okay, and Noah like the Ark. Have you tried uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 Sim? I can run Velocidrone, but I'm unsure my computer can handle GTA. Uh, Epic reduced the price to $0, and I picked up a copy. 
Uh, yeah, I think you're right on the money there. I doubt that uh, if, if your system can barely run Velocidro... It's not what you said, but um, I'm making an assumption. Uh, I'm sure GTA is going to be a hell of a lot more load on the computer. Uh, yeah, I, I and I'm on a Mac, so I don't even know if Grand Theft Auto is on a Mac. I just assume that there's no way in hell that it would run, um, so I've not even thought about it. Uh, Lenuzo says, what don't you like about H-Frames? So, uh, a lot of the collisions, uh, that I get into are nose down, and they put a decent amount of force in this direction on the arm, right? Nose down, coming in, hit a pole. So, the, the forces, if you're really nose down, uh, the forces are going to be in this direction, right? But usually with freestyle, I'm somewhere around here, so a good amount of the force goes in this direction. So when you've got like uh, more of an angle like this, and then you apply a whole bunch of force this way, this angle that this arm is is going to put a lot of the energy into the um, into the arm bolt in the shear direction. It's going to try to shear the arm bolt, and that's a very strong. Um, direction so that these arm bolts can take a shitload of abuse in that direction and if you look at the arm right it's really thin and now it's really thick so you can put a ton of energy in this direction on a um, squished X or true X frame and it can handle it what I found with H frames and with the zoot they they did a really good job at matching the the angle as much as possible but it's still I mean it's still not quite the same, right? Uh, it's not quite as much angle. On the rip squeak and on some of the other H frames, they've taken these arms and they've, they've rotated them even more to look like an H. And um, when you do that, and then you do that same kind of crash, and you have all this impact in this direction, um, the arm just is not going to be as strong. It's not going to transfer as much energy into like the length of the arm and into these arm bolts in the shear direction um, as something like this will. So just basically durability. The, the H frames uh, seem to be a lot less durable. And uh, also, uh, I, I think there could maybe also be the potential for more vibes. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know about that. Uh, but yeah, mainly it's a, it's a durability thing for me. Okay. Chat, 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 chatty chat. Hey, look at that. We're good. All right, cool. I'm going to move over. And uh, looks like Noah is is typing the actual um, words to, <laughs> to what I'm trying to explain. <laughs> um, pretty sure uh, rotten. Uh, I can't read that. I shouldn't read that, but you guys will read it. Ha! All right, so let's go and do some work. What do you guys think about that? Uh, keep those questions coming. I will look over. And try to answer them as quickly as possible. But if I can get this thing built and uh, fly it, that would be pretty cool. Get you guys some uh, some flight footage feedback. Well, not feedback, but just flight footage for the next uh, bunch of streams here. So let's let's dive in. Uh, so where we left off yesterday was that I think I have everything wired up. Uh, other than this one video wire, and I waited on that because I need to see which direction uh, I'm going to put this board in, uh, this HD board, on top of here. And I think what I want to do is bolt this flight control. Well, I can I can bolt these motors back down so that they're not flopping around. Uh, so let me do that real quick. Uh, where'd those arm bolts go? There they are. Uh, this frame is drilled. This is the Rotorius CB3 frame, which is not in production at the moment. Uh, it will be back, and it will be called the Ripper uh, at some point. I don't have any info on when, unfortunately. Um, but someday it will be available. And these arms are drilled for both 9x9 and 12x12. Uh, which is good because these Emacs uh, 1306s are 12x12. Uh, if you absolutely have to have 9x9, nine nine, uh, RCX, who uh, RCX's motors are sold only on MyRCMart, uh, they make a 9x9 nine nine mount 1306 that is 
everybody's good, if not maybe a little bit better than these Emacs motors. Uh, RCX makes amazing motors. They don't seem to spend any money on marketing. Uh, they put all the money back into their motors and make one hell of a product. Oh god, it just fell. Did something just fall? What? Oh, there it is. It bounced. Twas a washer! Uh, Marco's got four months in the sim. Hang on one second, Marco. Let me get this stuck on here and then I'll read the rest of your comment. Because I'm excited. You started off with, uh, you started off strong on that comment there. Okay, let's get this in here. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Man, I'm the worst streamer sometimes. Oh my god, you guys still can't see what I'm doing. Hey, there we are. Okay. And let me just get one more screw into this motor. Okay, while well, I'm doing that, uh, four months in the sim, ultimate goal is cinematic stuff. Uh, any of the, wait. Any of the head to, any of the head to step transition for me. I'm not sure what that means. I was thinking Tiny Hawk and then start building. Am I better with three inch for first rig? Uh, another really good question. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong, to be honest with you, Marco. Uh, so try not to overthink it, which if you're anything like me, is completely impossible, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think you can really go wrong either way, uh, I would make the decision based on, like, uh, where are you gonna fly, like, what's your experience been so far, like, like, if you're sure that you're gonna stick with this hobby, um, I always recommend to just go all in, and, and just build something, uh, I bought my, my very first rig, that Tiny Hawk I was talking about a little bit ago, um, I bought that as a bind and fly because I just didn't know if, if I was going to stay in this hobby. So I thought, you know what, let me let me just get something that flies, I can fly it, see if I can, see if I can make my thumbs wiggle the way they need to wiggle for this hobby, and, uh, and then I'll make the decision. But, um... Man, words are hard today, again. But yeah, it's, uh, you kind of can't go wrong with either. So which, uh, whichever fits your budget, fits your time frame, uh, yeah, trust, trust yourself on that. But, I mean, if, if you've been in the sim that long, you're probably pretty invested. And, um, yeah, you can probably just start building. You're, you're going to end up with 15 quads anyway, so... <laughs> Um, which one you start with becomes uh, sort of inconsequential in a hurry. Uh, Protonigo says, why is, why is everybody, why everybody be like, stick time and nothing else when my brat feels totally different and makes me lose or gain my flight mojo after I made tune adjustments? Um, Proton, because you've been flying for a long time, in my opinion, uh, I stopped flying simulators at one point because of a similar reason in that I would fly in the sim and then when I would go back out to fly um, this is when I was flying only five inch for a while there uh, when I would go out to fly I would spend like half my actual flight time uh, just trying to get used to flying for real versus flying in the simulator um, so I stopped flying in the simulator and uh, and yeah and, and I I've gone back, but it still happens. Like, if I spend a bunch of time in the sim, I get used to the the sim physics rather than real physics, and uh, I have a hard time switching back. So, yeah, man, I, I, I really do think it's because you've been flying for a while. Uh, I don't sim anymore because of this. It, it doesn't... Like, for me now, the sim is, is a video game. It's, it's not a training tool. Uh, it's a straight-up video game. After you've kind of memorized all the stick movements and, and you're comfortable with uh, finding your horizon and, and you know all the all that important stuff, uh, I think there there's a the potential if you're like me that you might need to uh, to get out of the simulator and uh, just figure out how to fly more in real life to um, to continue to improve. So it's it's interesting that you say that because I've um, I mean, I've never asked anybody else about that happening, but um, 
it's interesting that it's it sounds like it's happening to someone else. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, when when you're new, I will absolutely um, stick to my guns on the fact that I think the simulator is the most important thing in the world. Um, there's a lot of stuff that in it to to flying FPV that has no uh, it, it's completely foreign to us, right? Like like using yeah okay so I, I played video games all growing up and whatnot um, but having a left stick that has throttle and yaw and then a right stick that has pitch and roll like there was no training for that in my life like there was nothing that got me ready for that right so uh, that's where I think the simulator is so 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 helpful when you're new is just breaking that like huge huge learning curve of how the hell am I gonna get my brain and my thumbs to talk to one another here on these stupid sticks that I need to wiggle around so yeah much uh, much recommended and the folks that sim really early on like by the time they start flying they're they're like ridiculously good and when I started flying it was a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> It was so difficult. I really wish that I had found the uh, the simulator a lot earlier than I did. Eh. Nut grabbers getting the job done. Oh, okay, so this is a... I have some of these um, M2 plastic nuts in here that are... that I have, um, like, stripped out so that they can act as washers and at some point I forgot that I'd done that and I mixed them all together so now sometimes when I pull a an M2 plastic nut out well whenever I, I put M2 plastic nuts on I have to pay attention to whether or not the threads are grabbing and on that one the threads are not grabbing so it was one of the ones that I'd strip, purposefully stripped out come on uh, if you guys get nut grabbers or need nut grabbers like these, I have a link in the description. I have many links in the description. Uh, they are affiliate links, so if you're doing an order on Amazon, GetFPV, or Banggood, and you hit one of those affiliate links before your order is done, even if you don't buy the thing in the affiliate link, um, I'll get a small percentage. And then I will, and, and all the money that comes through uh, the FPV stuff goes right back into it for more testing, more product reviews, more uh, giveaways. So yeah, if you're broke but you still want to support me, that's a good way to do it. Although if you're broke, you shouldn't be ordering from Amazon or Banggood or get FPV, I guess. But we all need to stay sane, so you're allowed to. Uncle Ciotti said, spend as much money as you want. See if that gets you. See how far that gets you with your wife, girlfriend, fiance. I refuse to pronounce the A on fiance. Because it just seems to ponce. Ponce. Okay, so we got some nuts going here. We're going to push the flight controller down a little bit with them. And then we're going to see how we're going to mount, what direction we're going to mount this HD board in. Um, there's always a little bit of sort of blind judgment when you're uh, tightening these screws down onto the flight controller with the rubber grommets. Uh, my rule of thumb is to get it to the point where uh, screw it down until it's contacting the rubber. You can see when it starts to contact the rubber, right? So that's going to be right about there. And then give it like another half or so turn, maybe a full turn. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, that's basically another full turn. Essentially, once you start to see... Oh, okay, so you guys can't see anything. Great. Uh, once you start to see the rubber squish, basically what will happen is... Um, focus, you jerk. Let's see if I can get it to... Uh, let's see if I can get you guys a little bit better of a, 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 a picture of what that is. Okay. Wow, I can't believe that focused. Awesome. So, here's what I'm going to show you. 
Oh, you know what? The nut grabbers will do a better job of this. Okay. So. You fucker. Alright, so here we go, right? Come down. It hasn't touched yet. Hasn't touched yet. Hasn't touched yet. Now the plastic is touching the, the rubber. And we're going to go about a half a turn. Oh, you son of a bitch. So that was a quarter turn. That was another quarter. I'm going to... And I'm going to give it like another half or so. Okay, so now, that was pretty much a full turn. So now what you can see is, see the, the gap in the rubber on the left side is a little bit less than the gap on the right side. So the, the rubber is being held up by the PCB of the flight controller on the right side. So this is kind of where I stop. Sometimes I'll, I'll loosen it up a little bit from here. Um, but if you continue to tighten this down, this gap on the left side will continue to close up and you'll really start smushing the shit out of this rubber grommet. Um, so this is pretty much where I stop here. It still gives it a little bit of movement. See that you can still move the, the PDB, the flight controller around a little bit, um, but it's not so loose that it's going to be bouncing around. So that, that's what I've always sort of done. Um, I've been playing around with that spec, like how tight, uh, to tighten these uh, the the soft mounting down for a long long time. I've been I started soft mounting flight controllers like forever ago before the the rubber grommet thing was was really a thing. Um, and yeah, it, it it definitely seems like if it's a more noisy build, you can back them off a little bit to help out. Um, but if it's a clean build, you'll actually get a better. Um, you'll get a more accurate gyro signal the, the more you have those tightened down because you're removing the rubber's soft mounting. Um, so you're passing more accurate, right, more accurate actual data into the gyro. If there's, if it's smooth enough for the gyro to handle that amount of vibrations, then you're good to go. But um, if it flies like a bag of monkey balls, then you know that um, you got too many vibes coming in and you got to try to uh, eliminate the vibes with potentially some... Uh, you're either going to do more filtering or you can do more physical rubber-based filtering here. So now is when I realize that I'm going to remove these nuts because... Oh, no, they're not. No, they're not. So it's a, it's a physical... All right, so now the name of the game is figuring out which direction we're going to orient and which side we're going to put up versus down um, to get this thing as flat as we can against the flight controller. So it's basically just a game of <clears throat> uh, rotating this thing over and over and over again to see where it fits the best. So uh, when I have it backwards like this, there's a conflict here with this button and the USB port, right? So that's not letting it come down. So then I flipped it over, and when it was flipped over, the conflict becomes this plug header back here uh, for the camera, and the, uh, the plug header in there to go between the flight controller and the ESC. It's, I can't really show it to you guys, um, but now you know what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna keep rotating this thing until I find an orientation that hopefully works uh, to get this thing down nice and flat. The only, uh, some of the things that we, all, we do want to remember though is that if we put the, the memory card slot towards the rear or the front and the buttons towards the rear on the front or the front, um, they're going to be a real pain in the ass to get to. So we want to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, so let's, <clears throat> let's rotate this thing all the way around to see how it is. We'll just move this out of the way. Come on, jerk. Get out of there. Uh, oh, I forgot about the chat. Uh, motor soft mounts, uh, raw picks, FPV, ask them out. Uh, motor soft mounts never work. Uh, it, they they make the situation worse. <clears throat> they uh, There's a lot of placebo to them. Like you do them, you spend the time doing them, and you're like, oh yeah, it's definitely better. It's not. Um, this has been confirmed by black box logs multiple times uh, and by myself just multiple, multiple, multiple times. 
um, just by flight results and the way that the PID tune reacts. Uh, essentially, the problem with motor soft mounts is that it's only soft mounted in one direction. Uh, there's a soft mount under the motor, so when the motor moves downwards, it's soft mounted. But then when the motor moves back upwards, the metal screw is going to bang into the hard carbon and it's going to spike the gyro. So you help in one direction, you hurt in the other direction, and that just either does nothing or it could um, it, it can confuse the, the flight software because it's not used to seeing a, a non-sinusoidal uh, uh, wave in there. Uh, the other thing that I really worry about with it is that it, it causes durability problems because when the motor hits, the motor is able to, to tilt um, and then when that motor tilts, it's going to put a lot more stress on the screws and it's going to bend the screws or maybe even break the screws. Um, so yeah, no, no, no on motor mounting. No, no, Nanette on motor mounting. Uh, let me scroll back up in the chat because I know I missed a bunch. Um, dirt, 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 dirt. Wow, I missed a bunch. Okay. Uh, wow, I missed a lot. You guys are, okay, let me come back over. And uh, let's work through some of these. Uh, looks like there's some really good questions that I want to get to. All right. Doc Murdoch says, I went all in and built a flight test Batbone V-tail frame. Is the sneeze coming? Oh, my allergies are a fucking mess again today. Um, from scratch out of wood and hardware from the local hardware store using a 22, using 2205, 2300 KV motors, 6-inch props on 3S. And a KK2 mini board, dude. That's cool. How how is it, Doc? I, the whole the 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 wing thing is very interesting to me. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's really interesting. Tiago, I got your back on that one. Tiago asking Athix if he's flown the T Motor F40 uh, versus the Emaxes. I actually did that yesterday. Yesterday or the day before, I forget. Uh, Emax 2306, 1700 KV on 6S on my one glide. Uh, T Motor F40 Pro 2, which is T Motor's uh, 2306, 1600 KV on another glide. Back to back them. Uh, the Emaxes have a little bit more RPM, go figure. 1700 KV versus 1600. Um, and they have every bit of grunt and just general performance as the T Motors do. Uh, which is pretty goddamn impressive for 12 bucks a motor versus 25. Uh, so, yeah, I... Oh, hey, Jamie's here. Hi, Jamie. Uh, everybody say hi to Little Stellar Fox. She's She's been streaming, too. Uh, go subscribe to her, or I'll beat you. She also has a Patreon. Go go, jump on her Patreon. She's doing stickers, all kinds of other fun stuff. Um... I don't remember what we were talking about. Oh, yeah, they're they're awesome. I was very impressed by them. And, uh, depending on, the, so the, the T-Motor Pro 40, uh, Pro t t F, Tiger Motor, can you please ditch this naming convention? It's just ridiculous. The T-Motor F40 Pro 4 is coming out. That's a 2306. Um, and it's supposedly gonna, so the Pro 3 was a 2306 and a half, and they were too heavy for me. Uh, the Pro 4 is supposedly gonna be a 2306 again, and lightweight again. So, uh, I'm really excited about that, but they're gonna be 25 bucks a motor, and, I assume, uh, and the Emacs is a 12 a motor. So, I don't know. I have a feeling what might happen is I'll try the Pro 4s. They'll be great, but I just don't know how they're going to be $12, $13 more a motor great. So I have a funny funny feeling I might be moving over to the Emax Eco 2306s. Uh, Proton to go says, Sim? I hardly ever fly in the Sim. How dare you, Proton. Get your ass in the simulator. Uh, Brian Ladmoreau. On your 5-inch glide, do you drill out your frames for the Town 20x20 flight controllers for 3mm hardware? Great question, Brian. I have thought about doing that a bunch of times. The reason why I haven't is that um, the I think I've broken in like two years. I think I've broken two, maybe three of the glide base plates, and two out of those three breakages occurred um, between those mounting holes and the corner of where the arms meet. Uh, so 
that's why I, I don't want to remove any more material and make that little area any less strong. Um, and I've got tons of M2 hardware, so it's very easy for me uh, to just mount the, the flight controller up front on M2 hardware, use M2 to M3 adapters, and all is well. Uh, but I've been very tempted to do that because I prefer to, I would prefer to run all M3 hardware in it. Uh, but yeah, I just with how often and violently I crash, I was kind of like, yeah, let me not remove any any material from the area that I keep not keep breaking, but that I have broken a bunch of times. Uh, Pesky says, I'm the same with Velocidrone for racing. Don't find it similar to my quad now, but I still like to use it because I struggle to get out on some days. Yeah, I still think simming is has its um, merits, uh, but just be careful. If, if you pump like 10 hours into the sim uh, and you're, you're at the level of a pilot where um, adjusting to different setups is a setback. Like basically, for me at least, I found that once I got to a certain level of pilot or whatever the hell you want to say um if like for, in order for me to get better i had to be really comfortable when i was flying and this is still true um i if, if i'm not totally comfortable i just can't fly near what my actual limit of flying is and so instead of actually getting better um so if, if my abilities are here, like the, my worst day ever to my best day ever, right? Um, as I fly other stuff, which for me this happens a lot because of all the micros, right? There was, a, there was like a year or so that I barely flew micros and I only th flew 5 inch. Um, so during that year I got up to like the best I could be and because I kept flying the same rig over and over and over again, I would go out and fly and I would fly up here and, and I would be like damn near as good as I could fly almost all the time. Well, then when I started to, to fly micros more and more, every time I go out to fly 5-inch, I have to bridge that gap. I have to fly 1 battery, 2 batteries, 3 batteries, 4 batteries, 5 batteries, 6 batteries to get up to that level where I was. Um, and some days I only get 6 batteries. So like the last battery of the day, I'm just barely starting to put a run together, um, and then I'm done. So, yeah, that, that just a little bit more sort of subtext as to what... The adjustment time and, and whatnot and then you know you look at a guy like steel who has always flown the exact same setup over and over and over and over again and he says all the time one of the things that's really important for you to improve as a pilot is to fly the same setup over and over and over again and look how good he is right it, it definitely shows so uh, I don't know just something to kind of to, to keep in the back of your head um, that is also one of the big reasons why I gravitate towards this build because this CB3 build at around 200, 210 grams, 4S450s, uh, these 1306 motors, this flies as close as I've ever been able to get a micro to fly to a 5 inch rig. Um, so, yeah, you're going to see, uh, moving forward, you're going to see much more CB3 micro content from me than Acrobrat, than Toothpick, than Tiny Trainer. Um, because it is frustrating for me. Like the the the, I went out and flew seven batteries yesterday or the day before on my five inch rig, um, on three five inch rigs. Actually, the fleet is finally coming back together, and I flew like shit all day because every single time I would throw it over something, I wouldn't like initially I wouldn't know if it was gonna make it. So there would be this doubt, um, just because I'm, you know, I've been flying these lighter weight rigs that don't throw as far and and all these things. So just Again, something to keep in mind. Uh, I gotta poop. I'll be back. <laughs> Hold on. I gotta give you guys something to, something to watch. Hold on. <laughs> I really gotta go now. Hurry up! Come on, internet. Hurry up! I'll jump on the rest of those questions in a, when I get back. Um, come on, come on. Go, go, go. Oh, I'm going to shit my pants, guys. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Come on, come on, come on. Open up the playlist window. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm going to give you guys old shit to watch. Uh, old stuff. My love. My love. All right. Some old 
OG micro stuff. This is from like two years ago. This will make you guys feel better about your uh, your piloting skills.
gotta be me too. Uh, silly of me to think that I couldn't bring myself to be you. Ah, uh, but behold it, it's benevolence behind this, but don't stand though. Careful. sweaty on that one <laughs> just kidding just kidding that's disgusting there's a there's a limit i've crossed the line all right let's get this out of here and um <clears throat> let's keep going dude it's hot as shit in here it's like 78 degrees in here yes i did wash my hands i also need to shave this whole area but i feel like i'll just let it keep going um i don't know why uh, <clears throat> let me, I gotta show you guys something cool. So, I was talking on yesterday's stream about, uh, Jimmy Broadbent, who's my favorite, um, sim racer on the YouTube, 
and uh, he did a uh, three plus hour um, Indy 500 simulation yesterday, and he actually won it, uh, which is huge because it was um, <clears throat> he's like at the higher levels, and uh, there were like it was there was an incredibly challenging field of people. Look at the reaction. Look at the like legitimate just reaction. This is like this is motorsport to me. It's it's so fucking frustrating, but like when it all goes well, I got to show you guys this. You, you just have it's such like a real uh reaction. Yeah, motorsport is uh <clears throat> you're top of the world when you're winning and then anything but first place and you're and you're just fucking miserable. Um, but it makes when you win just like ridiculous and uh, it was just such a reaction here you guys go yes 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 come on yes Mitt, you've got two of the three of the triple crown down, right? Yes! Congrats. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, it's it's cool, man. He, he's just like such a, a genuine dude. Um, his grandfather actually just died, and, and he was saying, um, that's what he was just saying, this is for you, granddad. Um, yeah, just a, just an awesome guy, um, and uh, I haven't seen him win yet. I've, I've been following him for a few months, um, and I haven't seen him win a race yet. That's how competitive it is at the top. And, I mean, like, that race had uh, 28 cars in it. So, I mean, like, legitimately there are 28 drivers, plenty good, like, like that are all good enough to win, um, which is why typically he doesn't win, right? There's so many top-tier guys in sim racing. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just thought that was super cool. <laughs> I, was, I was laughing my ass off yesterday when he won because it was just such a yeah, just such a cool reaction. Um, <clears throat> all right, enough enough motorsports talk. <laughs> Back to FPV. Uh, Marco says overthinking is my game, man. Right there with you, Marco. Uh, so due to budget and unavailability of parts here, I don't want to wander too much flying DJI stuff now for video production. Um, so I want to up my game ASAP. Uh, yeah, I mean, on the cinematic side, I would probably have you leaning towards a 5-inch rig. 5-inch um, rigs, to some extent, you kind of can't go wrong. Uh, the, the parts have all been researched uh, to death. And so, like, any of the current setups are really good. I have, I like... <coughs> I like um, lighter weight <laughs> five inch setups. Um, so down in the description, I have affiliate links to all the five inch stuff that I that I fly. Um, beyond that, just hit me up, CID FPV somewhere, and uh, if you have any other questions, and we can get a build uh, put together. So one of the other things I do over on Patreon, one of the things that I offer is like build advice, build uh, planning. Um, so, yeah, feel free to, to ask me. Uh, if you want to join Patreon, great. Uh, if not, just message me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, wherever, and uh, we'll talk, man. Get you up in the air. Uh, <laughs> Janie wants to borrow my nut grabbers anytime. Uh, <laughs> uh, what else do we have here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, no orange for a while. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, raw picks, we talked about motor soft mounting. Mike Bergman asked a question, and then the chat zipped to the bottom. So now I get to scroll back up. Wow, I got to scroll up really hard, really far. There we go. Uh, didn't you say that you wire Crossfire Nano RX with 30 gauge? Uh, yes, absolutely. I run <clears throat> pretty much everything on 30 gauge, uh, other than. The battery leads, really. Uh, yeah, battery leads come in, and then everything else is 30 gauge, yeah. Uh, JWFPV, I've been having some vibrations visible in GoPro footage. Would adding soft mounts to the flight controller help? 
Uh, they might JW, but, um, <clears throat> and I've got a post about this over on the Patreon page, I always recommend that you look at mechanical, physical problems first before going into the software and trying to fix things in the software. Um, mainly because it's like putting a band-aid on a head wound. If you've got uh, a motor that's out of balance, uh, which is typically what causes either a prop or a motor that's out of balance, that's typically what causes uh, jello in the GoPro footage. <clears throat> Trying to fix that in the software is uh, going to be very difficult, and you're never going to be able to get it completely out. So um, take your props off. Put your motor, uh, put your, um, uh, plug your rig into Betaflight, go into the motors tab of Betaflight, plug a battery in, and spin each motor up. I'll show you. No, I won't because there's no, because <clears throat> there's no, uh, battery lead on that. I don't have a rig with props off right now to show you, but go into, uh, spin up each motor. There's, there's four little graphs for each, four little, uh, sliders for each motor. Go in there, uh, take your quad, put it in your hand with it plugged in. Like, so with my little setup here, <clears throat> I'll reach my left hand over so I can put the quad in my hand and then right hand here on the mouse so I can move those bars up and down and, um, run each motor all the way up to full and then back down and you're just feeling for how many vibrations are there. What I think you're going to feel is that one of your motors has more vibrations than the rest. Replace that motor bell or the entire motor. It could be the, it's it's probably a bent motor shaft, um, so you can just usually swap the bell out. Um, <clears throat> it could also be the bearing. So if you want to be safe, swap the whole thing out, you'll get a new bearing, new motor bell. Um, or just swap the motor um, uh, sh uh, bell out. Wow, my nose is really just going for it. Ugh, trying to run away. Uh, so yeah, that that's my suggestion there. Also try a different prop. HQ props uh, are typically not the best balanced. Uh, gem fan and T-motor and Dow props tend to be better balanced than HQ. Um, so try a different prop. Um... It looks like I misspoke. Jamie doesn't have a Patreon anymore, um, so you'll just have to go over to her YouTube channel and support her there. Doc Murdoch says, <clears throat> It flew very well to learn how to fly FPV on. Uh, I was fortunate as I already knew how to fly regular RC helicopters from ancient times without all flight controllers and gyros. Um, that's super cool, Doc. Uh, another um, uh, local guy, Andy, flew... Uh, RC helicopters, and now he's been flying at FPV, and he's gotten good really fast. So that's that's always interesting to see. Steve FPV, I am okay. How are you, sir? Um, <clears throat> all right, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Poop emojis. All right, good, good, good. <laughs> Brandon Bailey said, "Ask if anybody else likes the sketch." <laughs> Never mind. I'm not gonna read that. <laughs> Ropix thinks it's funny. Uh, dirt, 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 dirt. Here we go. Uh, Motorbat saying, "Hey, what's up, Motorbat? How are you?" Proton to go. Today, my brat. Today, my brat did flew to the side after I let go of the sticks. Betaflight said y'all was twenty points off center. Where did it say that y'all was? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I fixed it, but can't test it now. Is twenty enough to make it drift, or maybe another problem? Yeah, for sure. Um, I my. It's weird that you mentioned that. I, I was off on pitch. I was off by like five or six on pitch. Um, and it was driving me crazy. And yeah, it was just trims. It was just uh, the trims on the radio. Um, so yeah, 20 is definitely enough to, to make it drift all over the place. Uh, Mr. Picks, uh, Mr. Picks, great. Mr. Tuck said, you could have at least cropped out the black bar at the top. <laughs> Easy for me. <laughs> Easy for me who has no FPVs on my channel. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um... <clears throat> That weirdo with a skateboard is back. Hey, man, how are you been? Um, hey, how are you keeping? Different. How are you keeping? Could be an autocorrect problem, or it could be just dialectical of different areas. I'm good, man, you? Uh, Raw Pick says, everything okay? Hard work? Oh, yeah. Always hard work. Always. Poop intermission. <laughs> Doc Murdo. <laughs> Not gonna read that one. <laughs> Looks like you guys got into pooping puns. That's fun. Um, Tiago says, you need to go to Steele's house. 
Um, had give him uh, driving lessons. <laughs> Have you seen his sim? Um, I haven't. Uh, we talked through text this week, and um, uh, he said at some point he was going to invite me to check it out. Uh, so just waiting for the invite. Um, weirdo with a skateboard. Trust me, with my luck, even a five inch can go <laughs> can go horribly wrong. Yeah, that is the truth. Um, <clears throat> Doc Murdoch says, nice to see Jet's DRL practice rig. Uh, for cinematic flights. I haven't seen that. I gotta, I'll gotta. i have to check that out tonight. He's got a DRL practice rig set up. That's pretty cool. Uh, Mr. Tuck said, Chat and CIDPV Source 1 or Dingo 5 or other suggestions for freestyle frames around that price. Uh, Mr. Tuck, you know i got to recommend the glide frame. Um, and it is in stock, as Tiago, Tiago called out. Uh, the only reason not to get the glide frame would be if you absolutely plan on just constantly crashing really, really hard um, like hideously hard, like worse than me, which is, I can't imagine it being worse than me, but, um, or if you specifically want to fly something that's heavier, because the glide frame is not, unless you put a big battery on it, um, but if you want to fly something that's like 700 grams all up, uh, the glide frame is going to get overwhelmed, and it's going to break even more often, so, uh, but, yeah, uh, if you can stay below, like, 640 grams, which is pretty easy with the glide frame, uh, it's going to be plenty durable. Um, Mr. Huggy says, check hashtag live stream on Discord. Hmm, let's see. I don't have the Discord page up because I'm the worst when it comes to Discord. I forget that it exists. It's not in my typical rotation of things that I do. You know, check Facebook, check Instagram, check Patreon. Um, so thanks for calling that out. Let me take a look. Live stream live one tag. Let's see what it is. Uh, yeah, they, they called that out, Huggy. He's two thirds of the way to the triple crown. <laughs> so that that wiki, it's probably gonna get. So one of the one of the viewers did that on the uh, on the wiki page, and um, that'll probably that'll probably get removed. <laughs> because, um, but yeah, it, it was super funny. They did that like right after he won, and and everybody was laughing about it. Um, <clears throat> All right, and let's get back into it here. All right, let me just pull Discord over to the other monitor where I can forget about it for another week. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. T nope, 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 that's not a tag. And, oh, God, there's a bunch of tags. Here we go. Reader with a skateboard. Uh, been better, and how you keeping is just a uh, dialect thing. Okay, yeah, I had a feeling. How you keeping? It's it's funny. I'm usually pr I, I, uh, Chris and I watch a lot of British television, um, so we usually have a, a half decent idea of what some of the things like that are. But I've never heard of how you keeping. Um, where where are you from, uh, skateboard? I don't want to call you weirdo. I don't want to be mean. So then I guess I have to call you skateboard. Uh, where are you from? I, I'm I'm interested as to where, what region, uh, how you keeping is a, is a, a saying, and just for my own personal insanity. Uh, Freelo just says no job is done until the paperwork is finished. Freelo, are you are you referring to shitting? <laughs> Mr. Sprinkles, when I go full throttle on my five inch, I get slow yaw wobbles. Could it be the pids? Um, <clears throat> So that issue, I actually think that I would uh, blame on the software. Um, interesting. What's the yaw? What's your yaw p gain at? If your yaw p gain is any more than like forty, um, drop it down and and see if it goes away. That's interesting. Full throttle yaw wobbles. So by yaw wobbles, you mean like yaw rotations, right? If it's if your view is is doing this, then it's it's role related. Interesting. Uh, you're welcome, Tux. Uh, William Barlow says Banggood has the Brat frame for twenty five bucks on promo. Should I get it or get the Brat Duo? Is there a better frame you recommend right now? Uh, the Brat Duo is one of the best three inch frames that that I can really recommend. Um, <clears throat> all jobs in my experience. <laughs> Um, I would get the legit Brat Duo. Uh, the the V1 Brat frame is is good, but the the improvements that Tommy made for the Duo are real. Um, much easier to build, much easier to put um, uh, uh, a run cam hybrid 
into, uh, and it's not that much more money, and you're supporting Tommy directly. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> I would I would go Brat Duo to be honest. I, I would pay a little bit more for the Brat Duo. Uh, the skateboard says uh, Glasgow, Scotland, and just call us weird, <laughs> and just call us weirdo. <laughs> Going by skateboard is just weird. Fair enough, you asked for it. Um, <clears throat> 25 bucks is pretty damn good. You can't go wrong with either. Um, 25 bucks for the V1 Brat Frame is amazing. Uh, but if you got a couple extra bucks, the Duo is better for sure. It's stronger, uh, it's easier to build in, and it'll hold better. Um, oh, the practice rig, Doc Murdoch. Okay, right, right, right. That big old heavy tank of a bastard frame. I gotcha. Yep, I'm familiar with that frame. Uh, Gel says, Mr. Tux and CIFPV. I've been a lot of times on the fence to order a glide, but it seems to be sold out all the time. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, good stuff sells out all the time. Uh, do it though. Do it. The glide frame is uh, is phenomenal. Most underrated frame in FPV for sure. Um, <clears throat> uh, I do not, William. Uh, but you just uh, I don't know. Drop in the comments like Ciotti sent me or something like that, and that'll put a smile on uh, on Bob's face. Um, Bob is pretty much sell. Pretty much everything on Bob's website, he's selling as low as he possibly can. Um, he's a dentist. He's running the, the website for fun um, and to get good stuff into people's hands, not to make money from. Uh, so, yeah, whenever you buy stuff on FPV Cycle, you're getting it, like, as cheap as, as Bob can offer it and not lose money, pretty much. Um, because, yeah, being a dentist is going to pay the bills a whole hell of a lot more than selling FPV stuff. Let's get back to work on this build after I wipe the trail of snot out of my face. Um, my nose is getting worse and worse. So I might actually um, cut today's stream a little bit short. Because I'm just fucking miserable. I'm so sick of my nose just doing this. Um, <clears throat> uh, yes, all up weight, protein to go. Uh, my uh, so I've got two glides now. I'll, I'll put them on the scale for you guys because I know it's it's kind of hard to believe <clears throat> that a full up basher freestyle rig could possibly be that light, but it is. And I just weighed them yesterday, so <clears throat> the uh, the weights are kind of fresh in my mind. <laughs> It's also fun to kind of do this every so often. Um, let me weigh three of them. <clears throat> so, uh, I need a session. Uh, one of these broken ones will do. So, uh, I need to push that button. Nope, that's not the right button. That's the right button. So here we go. <clears throat> This is uh, 30 by 30 ESC, 20 by 20 flight controller, uh, run cam micro eagle up front with the big heavy but beautiful RC25G lens, uh, 1000 UF capacitor, Tramp BTX, uh, Crossfire Nano, Immortal T, full TPU uh, GoPro mount, uh, 23, lightweight 2306s. Uh, so there's the, um, so there it is with the GoPro. see that. Now let me grab a battery. Okay. Uh, and these are Tattoo R-Line 6S uh, 1050s, which are kind of sort of the lightest <clears throat> of the uh, of the 6S batteries that are affordable. So there you go. 607, 606, 607. No, just 607. 607, 608 for this rig. Um, why the hell... Well, that's weird. Why is this other rig so much heavier? Um, so this is my other... This is weird. Why is this one so much heavier? I weighed this last night, and it was a lot more than that. Huh. That's weird. Um, I weighed this frame last night, and it was like 620. Is it not... The whole thing is hovering, like it's all up in the air. What am I forgetting? GoPro? Battery. Huh, okay. So I guess I, I guess the scale was off last night. Uh, so there you go, 601. This is, oh wait, okay, no, no, no. Th th so this is the lightweight rig. 
So the difference in this rig is um, it's got a smaller camera. It's got a Runcam Racer uh, 2 camera. And it's got the uh, the 20 by 20 version of the Akon AK32 uh, ESC. Uh, and this is also on uh, FR Sky, which doesn't really have uh, much of a weight difference. But I guess the Immortal T is a little bit heavier than the... Um, the I don't know. Other words. Words! Elude me. Okay, so this is the one that I weighed last night, and it was kind of fat. Uh, which I'm a little confused about right now. I, that first wig that I rigged that I weighed, I don't know why that was so light. So this one should be like 620. Yeah, so there you go. 623 for this rig. What the hell? Why is it... What's the difference? Oh, the base plate. I put a big fat base plate on this rig, didn't I? Did I? I think I did. I think it's a, it's a much... Um, thicker base plate, but damn, dude, 20 grams? Maybe a what the hell? Huh. Hold on. I, this is, this is strange. These two, it doesn't even look like that thicker of a, that much thicker of a base plate. Weird. Weird. Where's the, tw maybe I didn't weigh this one correctly. Hold on. Let's put this one back on the scale. Make sure it's centered. Make sure it's not like hanging up on anything. Okay. GoPro. And battery. 607. I mean, that's. It was a minute ago. What the hell? Why? How is it so light? Um. Wow. No, it's. It's hovering. It's hovering on the scale. Interesting. Um, well, I'm going to... Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm starting to see some differences. Uh, there's a little bit more TPU on the heavier one to hold the Immortal T out the back. Uh, the standoffs are heavier. Damn, that that's a lot of extra weight for two rigs that I thought were pretty much identical. I'm going to have to look a little bit more into that. Uh, this is, here's what I also want to do. I, know, I haven't weighed the, uh, the glide hammer, even for myself yet. So let's see what the, uh, the fat boy weighs. The glide hammer's got 2407 big fat bastard Lumineer zip motors on it, uh, as well as a Hero 7. So this is gonna really, this might actually max the scale out. Yep, there it is. So we'll have to do the math, uh, Wow, no battery. It's 572. Um, somebody do the math for me. 572 plus whatever this is. 168. Wow, this is a fat, 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 fat. Oh my god. <laughs> What's that uh, math add up to? Anybody? Wow, that is a big bitch. Jeez, look how pretty it is, though. My God, for a fatty, at least it's it's good looking. Seven forty. Oh my God, chonky is the word. Chonky is the word. Look at that chonky mess. Man, it flies fucking nice <laughs> with these big ass motors. The only thing that lets this down is the uh, the brain um, uh, the brain FPV flight controller. Uh, it just refuses to deal with um, vibrations. Oh, God, don't look at the one set of wires that isn't purple. There we go. That's the pretty side with all the purple wires here. <laughs> I ran out. I also put some stickers on it. I don't know. thought it might make it go faster, putting stickers on it, whatever. Uh, flies amazing, though. The, the glide hammer, I'm really, really happy with the uh, flight characteristics. Oh, my nose. Why? Why you gotta be a dick nose? Why you gotta be a nose dick? Alright, I'm gonna leave those two rigs that are um, mysteriously way, way, way off in weight uh, out <clears throat> to remind myself to figure out why. Like, I can feel the difference in weight. I can feel it. <clears throat> like, like, I can feel it. You know, like with the feels. 
with my feels. Fuck, dude. Where's all that weight coming from? It must just be little stuff. Um, I mean, there's, like, pieces. So, a definite difference is um, this guy's got the Immortal T in the back here on uh, two pieces of TPU. So there's two, two chunks of TPU back here that don't exist on this one. And, okay, so this is a heavier base plate. For sure this is a heavier base plate. Uh, that's what it is. It's the, it's the base plate on this. Uh, so this base plate was cut for me by Ryan Harrell. Uh, and I, um, Kebab sent me the, uh, the files because he didn't have any in stock. And I was down. Uh, Tiago, can you do me a favor and shoot me a... Um, uh, I will forget to do that. Can you shoot me a message on Facebook uh, to do that? Because I've been meaning to. Um, I already added a 250 hurt uh, notch filter, uh, which supposedly um, is the, the the big difference between the Inven Invincense gyros and the Bosch gyro. Um, but I remember Mark had said something else about how to tune the, the brain stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's what it is. They're, they're like, there are like spots in this base plate that are not cut out um, that, uh, that, uh, Ryan removed to just make it a little bit more durable. And so, yeah, that's really it. That's the big weight difference is the, is the base plate. Interesting. Wow. I can't believe that makes, uh, the, it's that much of a difference. It's a big difference. Um, Ooh, I gotta get batteries on the charger. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me give you guys something unreleased to watch while I plug in three batteries because that's all this stupid ass little um, Q6 ISDT charger can handle at once nowadays <laughs> come on nose be less of a jerk and let's go with unreleased Acrobrat on 4.1. Is this just farting around out front? Yeah, it is. All right, I'll be right back. This is also uh, run cam hybrid footage for you guys. Oh my god! Oh my god, my nose, guys. Oh my god. I'm gonna fucking cut it off with a pair of scissors. Okay, let's kill this. Yeah, let's turn the music down a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> back at it. Here we go. More chatting. Weirdo with a skateboard. Just gotta love that my PC works great uh, for a few years as there's no chance of me being able to fix it. It's like, nah, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, PCs suck. I, the whole computer thing is a real shit show. Uh, what's up, Cement Kid? How are you, man? 
Uh, everything goes faster with stickers. Stuck in trees confirmed. Uh, Tiago said... Okay, yeah. Uh, spats his notes. How you manage this wizard, man? I'm sitting about 520 before I add a battery. Um, yeah, I mean, most people fly heavier rigs. I, I'm, I'm pretty out of the ordinary that I fly something so light. Uh, so it's not just you. I'm the... I'm the weirdo. I'm the weirdo with a quad. And you're the weirdo with a skateboard. Ben Watkins, uh, what were those beta flight settings you changed for the Radix flight controller? I think they'll be the same for the 20x20 20 20 Lee. They will. Uh, I'm going to give the Radix Lee a shot. Um, basically, I just put a gyro 250 notch filter on, but don't do that. Um, Tiago, do me a favor. Drop the, um, the UAV tech notes on the Radix filters here in the chat. Um, ben Watkins, you're going to want to follow these because adding that uh, gyro notch didn't really work all that well for me. It, it didn't make it much better, if, if, if any better at all. Um, uh, Copter 612, yes. This CB3 is going to be my main 3-inch HD rig, uh, taking the place of the Acrobrats. I'm still going to keep one Acrobrat put together, uh, but the Acrobrat is more of a um, Cinewoop sort of thing that can also do freestyle. Uh, there's like a, a 60 or so gram weight difference between the Acrobrat and this guy, um, which makes a huge difference when I crash this with two millimeter motor shafts. Uh, so yeah. William Barlow is at 509 with an 1800 four cell. No idea, of, uh, what frame it is. Has a TPU top plate. Oh wow. That's a crazy frame. Uh, where do a skateboard? I must correct you on that. Everything goes faster with duct tape. <laughs> Trust me. I'm a doctor. <laughs> Duct tape is a sticker. Um, uh, I'm not actually just go with it. <laughs> All right, let's get uh, let's get some more work done on this guy since I think I got caught up in the chat, right? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, raw picks FPV with a great question. Have you ever experienced Beta Flight three five seven flying better than four point one on micros? Uh, in an untuned state, yes. Uh, stock to stock, no no tweaking. 357 does tend to be better than 4041, maybe 42. Um, but as soon as you start tuning 4.1 with the RPM filters, it starts to fly better. Um, at least that's been my experience with it. Um, but if you're not going to touch tuning, uh, yes, 3.5.7 is much more filtered, and that's why it flies better with micros, because micros have issues with filtering. Um, practice rig with. With <laughs> Doc Burdock says, practice rig without battery, including GoPro session, 720 grams. Chonky, 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 chonky. Uh, Freelo just says paint. Yeah, the paint weighs a little bit, for sure. Um, ordered a Source 1 V3 and want to lower it so I can't use the side plates for the cam. Is that a problem rigidity-wise? It could be. The side plates definitely box the front end, uh, the front end in. Uh, and the holes for those vertical plates can become weak points. Um, so it could. Only one way to find out. Chonky, chonky, chonky. All right. Doing some more work here. We're going to... Um, oh, God. We're going to wrap this up at 5 o'clock. Uh, because A, I want to fly. And B, my nose is being a just a jerk. Um, Stuck in trees, what LED race wires do you use? I use, on this one I have the, the Pyrodrone ones, but lately I've been using the legit, um, uh, the real deal, tiny LEDs uh, race wires, which I really like a lot. <clears throat> and I like supporting the, the dude that, you know, kind of started the, the LED race wire craze. Hey, there's the session. All right, so let's do a little bit more work here. And then um, we're going to wrap it up. And hopefully by tomorrow's stream, uh, my nose will stop being a dick. But I'm sure it won't. From previous experience with, you know, living with this nose. All right. So we're still trying to figure out how we're going to orient this board. Uh, rotating it around backwards here, which is not the way that I ran the power, but... I can always just uh, move the wires around. Not much of a problem. And amazingly, I, I'm actually sort of running out of stack space with this. 
I didn't think that would be a problem. Man, this plug header on the flight controller is really getting in the way. Um, I only actually need like that much clearance though. So let's flip this over one more time. So we've got USB port here, which is tall, <clears throat> plug header here, which is tall. So if I want to put this side down, just trying to look to see what's, everything is kind of of uniform height. So the problem is I've got tall things on two corners. Um, so like on this side of the board, this is really tall, these are really tall. Um, so I would basically need to run it like that to get it really low. And I don't really want this coming out the side. I also don't want the, um, to have to remove the card from the rear. So I think I'm just going to make it work up the way it originally was. And I'll just figure out what's, where it can, it can go lower, um, with the processor on top, or the memory card slot on top, or on the bottom, and it looks like my guess is going to be up top. Yeah, so I'm probably going to end up running it like this. <clears throat> Space it out. Um, oh my god, come on, dude. Get it together, bro. Ugh. Get it together, nose. Ugh. Uh, Nap FPV with a great question about clean FPV feeds that we're going to talk about in a minute here. So if I flip this over, those guys are going to push against that, but then this is going to push down against the, uh, um, the plug header. So let's see what that looks like. Not bad. And I mean, that would... No, uh, but I don't... See, I don't want it... Watching that. Um, I mean, it's going to fit either way, but if there's like a half a millimeter to be gained one way or the other, uh, I'm going to go that route for sure. Charger is ramping up and freaking out behind me because that's what it does. So I have a feeling that this is going to be how we run it. And the, the closest point of contact is going to be that switch on that USB port. Um, but that's not that big a deal. That is uh, kind of okay with that. Um, so the other option is to flip the flight controller over. And I kind of wish that I'd done that. But uh, I see why I didn't do that. Because the USB port would, would contact. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, the USB port would be trying to take up the same space as the as the battery leads. So this is fine. We're going to space this up. I mean, worst case scenario, I can actually run. I have another like two millimeters. I could run longer um, stack screws up through the bottom. Uh, and all these problems would go away. But it's such a pain in the ass to remove those stack screws at this point of the build that... I'm going to try to just do it like this. So I need more spacing, so that means these plastic nuts are going to come off. Um, or I could just add spacers. Let me try that. I, I think if I add spacers, though, they're going to want to contact the... Uh, well, I can... S let me see. Let me see something. So I'm going to put this side down, but I, I want to test something. Um, they put components so close to the stack holes that a lot of times um, you got to pay attention to what you're spacing this up with because it might hit the components, and that is no good. You do not, you do not want that going on. So, like for example, I'm just going to put this on here and see if it lays flat. Oh, and it does. All right, so that's good. So that one lays flat. Let's check all four of them. This one does lay flat. Okay, good. Uh, that one definitely will, and that one definitely will. Okay, so cool. We can just, uh, let's just try 
spacers on those guys. Uh, before I do that, let me read this comment that looks like an excellent question from Nap FPV. What are your tricks for clean FPV feed? Uh, run a thousand UF low ACR capacitor, uh, VTX and cam on common ground. Tried powering from VBAT and respective BEC pads, but can't completely eliminate noise. Um, I mean, you're already doing the big things, man. The, the, having the grounds on the same pad makes a big difference. Um, the other thing you can try is to power the camera off of the VTX. Most VTXs have 5 volt out. Um, try to power it off of that. Uh, the other thing you can try is moving to a 5 volt VTX. Um, the 5 volt lines tend to have more filtering than the VBAT lines. Um, so you can give that a shot. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing you can do is like raise the filtering in beta flight, but then that affects flight performance. So for me, I get to a point where I like, I, I do the ground thing. And if my next step will be to power the camera from the VTX and from that point on, I just suck it up and fly through dirty, uh, uh, a dirty feed. I know it's not a great answer, but it's such a pain in the ass sometimes. Um, Ken Hill just got the UP616 charger and 400 watt PSU combo from RDQ. Nice. Yeah, I gotta change chargers at some point here. Uh, Weirdo Escape... Okay, yeah, we talked about that. Uh, Tuck says, What buzzer loss model finder with its own battery do you all use in chat? I think I need one. I haven't used one of those yet. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Alright, so let's go with some spacers here. And where'd the other two go? The other two fall off when I... Yep. There's one. Where is the other? Oh, God. <clears throat> um, okay. You know what? I'm not going to search for it. I'm just going to grab another one. There's another good one. Okay. So now we got some... Spacer action, let's see how this fits now. Oh man. Brutal. Brutal. I don't know if it's worse for me or for you guys having to listen to me snortle the whole stream. Okay. Put this here. Uh, the other thing I actually need to check is will the camera... Uh, wire reach and the answer is yes ooh baby that is good news right there okay so we're good uh, that's on those spacers now and it would appear we've not got the clearance that we need uh, because it's moving back and forth like that but that's a problem with the height of the spacers not a contact problem with the with the board. So this is going to get a little bit annoying. Uh, I got to deal with my fucking leaking face again. Oh my god, why me? Why me? Why me? We're going to go with a skateboard just went off the reservation. Not doing FPV right as I don't get FPV feed at all from a foot away. Um, yeah, that's no good. You got to fix that, bro. Bro! Ugh. Uh, okay, so I see what's going on here. This, uh, this is way too high here. I got to crank that one down. And I might even back this one off a little bit. Oh my god, you guys can't see anything. This is... This is... <laughs> this is crazy. Alright, so I'm going to back that one off a little bit. And then I see the same problem going on on the other side. It's always a little difficult when you're... Um, when you run like the, the screws up from the bottom like this. Um, it's very easy to have them become uneven and then when you put stuff down on them it like wants to wobble around and shit so we're gonna try to fix that here 
That looks like it's a little bit more even. All right, let's give that a shot. Let's see how that does. Don't try to fall off the desk. <clears throat> All right, this way. And let's see if that's a little bit less wobbly. Nope, just as wobbly. Look at that. The nuts are in different spots. So, this and this are too high. That's why it's wobbling. So I need to back this one off, back this one off, and crank these two down. So let's do that. Uh, this one I need to crank down. Well, let's just try that. We'll do it little by little. Can't believe that washer stuck to the board. That was weird. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit better for sure. Still not uh, quite there. Actually, I need to I need to space this up a little bit. Uh, so instead of cranking down, I'm going to loosen these guys. That'll give it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more words. Oh, that's a little too loose. Let's get it back down there. Okay, yeah, that's about as loose as I think I can kind of make it before it's too loose. Uh, Travis Cook, what motors are good for a 6S Gecko build? Uh, what's the what's the Gecko? Is what what size prop is the Gecko? Is it three inch prop? And uh, what are you gonna do with it? Freestyle, cinematic stuff. What's the uh, what's the goal? All right, so this is a lot less wobbly, wibbly wobbly, but. Still not super happy with where this is. I need more. Sp I need like a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit more spacing. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. All right, it's five. It's five oh one. I can't deal with my nose. It's it's too much. I'm sorry, guys. Um, this is ridiculous. I'm gonna go put my head in the sand and cry. Um, we're gonna finish this up tomorrow. I can't deal with this right now. I'm gonna lose it. Uh, my face has betrayed me, and you, and all of you. Blame it on my face. Uh, Gecko is three inch um, freestyle. Go with uh, go with these motors actually. Build like this same thing basically. Emacs thirteen oh six four thousands on four S. Um, fucking game changing. You'll love them. Uh, and then weirdos. Okay, we talked about that. All right, cool. So I hate to bail, guys. I'm sorry, but it's uh, it's a, a catastrophic face event. Um, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern. We're going to do the giveaways tomorrow night. And um, until then, send me questions if you have them. I'm also hungry as hell, so I'm going to go get some food. Uh, but you guys be good, and I'm going to go um, fly as well. And I'm going to have some spicy food and some dandelion tea. Thanks for your show. Be good, guys. Um, hit me with those questions wherever you want. Uh, uh, affiliate links down here. Click them if you want me to get free money and spend more on testing stuff for us and more on giveaways um this is just allergies um uh patreon do the things you guys rule and uh there's a crane edit coming one day this week that you guys are gonna freak the fuck out about um so stay tuned for that and i'll talk to you guys tomorrow later